twin to twin transfusion syndrome. Twin to twin transfusion syndrome. Twin to twin transfusion syndrome. 10%, the survival rate of untreated twin to twin transfusion syndrome. So what is twin to twin transfusion syndrome? This is a rare condition that develops in identical twins while in the womb. The majority of the time, these twins are sharing a placenta. The placenta is responsible for providing these babies with nutrients and oxygen while in the womb. It also disposes waste from the baby's blood. In cases where identical twins are sharing a placenta, it is relatively common for the blood vessels of two twins to connect sharing blood with each other and the mother at the same time. In the vast majority of these cases, these twins are sharing the blood evenly, with each twin giving and receiving the same amount of blood. However, in some cases, one twin is giving more while the other is receiving more. This is when twin to twin transfusion syndrome develops. One twin will be the donor, giving more blood than they receive, while the other is the recipient, taking more blood than they are giving. Uh, I think I'm getting it. So what makes this such an important condition? Well, when babies in the womb aren't getting their proper amount of blood, or receiving too much, this becomes a massive problem. Both twins are at risk of heart failure due to improper blood levels, and possibly organ failure as well. Since these developmental days are crucial, this condition can be deadly if left untreated. Wow, that sounds awful. You mentioned earlier how this only occurs in rare cases. How alert should any potential parents of twins be about this development? Identical twins can be the biggest blessing a mother can receive, but this excitement can quickly turn into concern. Identical twins have around a 75% chance to be both monochorionic and diamniotic, and of those, approximately 20% will develop twin to twin transfusion syndrome. Super interesting. Interesting, but I only understood about half of those words. Break it down a little further, please. Okay, okay. So basically, identical twins don't always share a placenta while in the womb. About three-fourths of identical twins are monochorionic, meaning they share a placenta while in the womb. Of these, the majority are diamniotic, meaning they're in two separate amniotic sacs. That's the scenario that's perfect for the development of twin-to-twin -twin transfusion syndrome. I think I'm getting it, but just give it to me frankly. What are the odds of developing this condition? The odds for a pregnant mother who knows she's having twins to have identical monochorionic diamniotic twins is around 23%. 20% of these sets of twins will then unevenly split resources, leading to the condition. In simple terms, 15% of identical twins, around 3% of all twins, or slightly less than 0.1% of all pregnancies will result in a case of twin to twin transfusion syndrome. That's almost one case in every 1,000 pregnancies. That sounds incredibly rare. Why should we all care about this? Great question. The main reason you all should care about a condition so rare is because of the massive implication it can have on those diagnosed. With a survival rate lower than 10% when left untreated, it is crucial that everyone knows the severity of this condition. Also, given the graveness, one would think the awareness of the condition would be high. However, the vast majority of people seem to be unaware of it at all. Let's just take this random sample from the public as an example. All right, all right, let's go. Excuse me, can you be in my interview real quick? Just one question, one yeah, question. Sure. Have you ever heard of twin to twin transfusion syndrome? No. All right, that's all we needed from you, thanks. See, like I said, it seems like most of the population has never heard of twin to twin transfusion syndrome. Being that the condition is so deadly, awareness is key in not only improving funding for care and research, but also improving rates of early detection. What does early detection change about something this severe? Well, over the past few decades, massive strides have been made in saving the lives of the twins who are diagnosed. Thanks to incredible research by Dr. Ruben Quintero, the development of twin to twin transfusion syndrome laser surgery has saved thousands of twins. With the surgery and proper care, the survival rate can be massively increased to over 95%. I had the opportunity to speak with Dr. Quintero about his life saving research, and we'll get to that in just a moment. I can't wait to hear what he has to say. Why can't we skip to that part now? I had to walk into the same frame as you to answer such an important question. Anyways, we can't skip to that part now because first we have to understand the significance Dr. Quintero has played in both of our lives. Oh, I see where you're going with this. Really great directing and storytelling, if I do say so myself. Hi, my name is Amy Morris. I'm married to Tom Morris. I'm a small business owner and a yoga teacher and I'm the proud mom of Lacey and John and Joe. Bro, did we ever introduce ourselves to the camera? Oh no, I don't think so. Hi, I'm Joe Morris. And I'm John Morris. And this is our mom. Anyways, let's get back to it. Okay, so I was about 16 weeks pregnant and we knew we were having twins. 
However, we did not know if we were having boys or girls. We went in that day just with such excitement to find out how everything was going. And they told us that you were boys and we were very excited to get that news. And then they noticed a significant difference and everything suddenly got quiet. The ultrasound tech brought the doctor in who put all of the equipment down they had on me and just said, I am very concerned. I'll never forget those words. He was fairly sure you had twin to twin transfusion syndrome and the fact that I had it so early in the pregnancy that often later in the pregnancy they would immediately go ahead and deliver the babies. But it was so early for me that, was, that wasn't a possibility. It was just a terrible visit. I mean, he, he didn't lay out anything hopeful. In fact, they talked to us about the ability to terminate the pregnancy in the state of North Carolina and um, asked me if I wanted an antidepressant. They were basically telling me there was no way that you were going to make it because it was so early and you had it so severe so early that that visit that day you were showing both really big symptoms of it. John had just a trace of fluid around him. Fluid is the indicator, although it isn't the problem, it's the blood circulation that's the problem. You were basically doing the backstroke. I mean, you had tons of fluid around you and John, they could only even see the sac between his fingers. So it was like saran wrap around him. So we went home and um, the internet was relatively new, but you could have search engines similar to Google now, but that was an option but you, um, we used Dogpile. I don't think that even exists anymore, but I went home and typed in twin to twin transfusion syndrome and I pulled up the, there was a foundation that was established, Mary um, Slayman established the twin to twin transfusion syndrome foundation. I reached out to her and she said, it is terrible the, the, the stage you have it and there is a new option. There's a surgery that is a possibility. I called our doctor in Charlotte the very next day and I said, I'm learning some information about the opportunity to get this surgery and they said come back in and I went in and he came in and said there's very few times that I as a physician send people out with no hope and I did I couldn't stand sending you out of here yesterday with no hope um, but I found hope so um, and thank you you know so thankful for the foundation and um, she FedExed me a package it had information about the options then it had the surgery and that that was something that people had done I'd never heard about it. I read about it but I learned about Dr. Quintero my doctor started communicating with them in Florida they saw that it was so severe that I needed to get there right away that had me traveling there on Christmas Day for surgery on December 26th um, so we got to Florida, we flew to Florida Christmas Day, as I mentioned, and we went in the next morning, December 26th, first thing in the morning. They started doing ultrasounds right away, and it was very interesting. You were in stage two, which was the not visible bladder and the very small pocket of fluid around you. Stage four is the loss of one of the twins, so we knew that part at the very detailed ultrasound was when they started to pick up reverse blood flow to John's heart and that indicates that we were in stage three. So the check-in with them was suddenly urgent that we were gonna go ahead and be moved to the surgery. So I went from having the ultrasound to go right on in for the surgery and answer questions about, did I have a living will? Would I create one? And I remember waking up and that was when Dr. Quintero came in, put his hands on my legs, I remember, and said, we're, we hope for the best, we hope for the very best, and there is a, a really high percentage of times that the babies don't wake up from this surgery. And again, all of that was at that time. It's developed so much now that the risk is from anesthesia, I'm sure is not that high as it was because they do a lighter anesthesia. So they turned on the ultrasound machine and the tech was looking and she said, we have a heartbeat on baby A. And I was like, okay, who? And there was just a pause. And then I remember she leaned back to him and they was, everybody was all smiles. And she said, we have a heartbeat on baby B. And Dr. Quintero was like, you have a heartbeat on baby B. So it was just a thrilling moment for us. Yes, to find that out. And um, then they said, this is, you know, very big. You've made it to this stage. Now you have another month of making sure that what you were left with was enough to sustain you to get me to a healthy delivery point. They would monitor me every week for the next month. So for that month, every single visit felt like such a big deal. Everything really started to improve after the surgery. It was just a dramatic change. They scheduled a C-section for May 14th. The delivery went fine and I um, so grateful that I got to um, be a part of and tell about Dr. Quintero and 
the number of lives he has saved is just um, an amazing story he has and legacy and I'm just so honored to know him and um, be a part of this journey. Hello, my name is Dr. Ruben Quintero. I am originally from Venezuela. I did medical school in Caracas, Venezuela. I did my OBGYN residency and maternal fetal medicine fellowship at Yale University. Since approximately 1994, I developed the technique to treat twin-twin transfusion syndrome. Hey, Dr. Quintero. Nice to meet you, Joe. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Thanks Pleasure. for saving my life. Please. Can please. you explain the process of twin-twin transfusion syndrome laser surgery? So the first part is to go inside the womb and the first task is to be able to differentiate the vessels that link the two circulations between the babies from the vessels that belong to each baby that do not participate in blood sharing. The second part is to occlude those links, those anastomoses, with the use of laser. By doing that, you eliminate any blood sharing between the fetuses, and therefore you cure twin twin transfusion syndrome. What were some initial challenges you faced when you first started working on this surgery? The actual initial challenge was to come up with the concept of being able to identify the anastomosis. What we did was we looked at placentas and we analyzed the way that the fetuses would share blood with each other. That had to be translated to the surgical environment because you don't have the luxury with the, for example, the panoramic view that you would have outside with your two eyes versus the very, very narrow view that you would have with a very, very small instrument. Basically, I described or I developed or I understood how to precisely identify the vessels that connect the babies and differentiate them from the vessels that belong to each baby that don't connect them. So I know it's been some time since the surgery was initially developed. How has the technology growth in the past few decades changed the surgery and any research around twin-twin transfusion syndrome? Well, um, many things have changed since we first started to do the surgery. The first one was we were doing surgery under general anesthesia. We did a study where we showed that general anesthesia was not as well tolerated by the mother as local anesthesia. Over the years, we also increased the size of the instruments that we were using. So that gives us a very, very good field of view, very good ability to assess the placenta and not miss any of the links. How safe is it for the mother and how efficient is it at solving the problem? The surgery for the mother is extremely safe. It's done under local anesthesia. It's done with a single incision, very, very small incision. And then for the babies, it has become extremely successful. Before I started, the survival rate was only about 10%. Today, the survival rate is upwards of 93, 95%. It is one of the most successful examples where you take something that was not essentially treatable before, and today patients know, patients are aware that this surgery exists and that there is hope that they can save their babies. Now that the surgery is performed worldwide, how does it feel knowing that your research is saving lives all around the world? Obviously it's very gratifying because we have performed this surgery thousands of times now and saved thousands of babies that otherwise may not have survived. Humbling because we still don't have control of all of the factors. It's, it's kind of a mixed feeling of having developed all of this from scratch with no concept, with a negative milieu to even work in this. I remember at one conference, for example, in Europe, I was just starting and we had already done many surgeries and there's about a thousand attendees. And I rose my hand and I said, when we do this surgery, if the donor twin did not have a visible bladder before the surgery, the next day or within five days, we can see the bladder of the donor twin. That alone tells us that the surgery worked. Please sit down. What is this? You know, <laughs> snake oil, forget it. <laughs> sit down. Please, what are you talking about? <laughs> Please sit down. Who are you? You know, <laughs> sit down. <laughs> Don't bother us, you know. Imagine. At the time, no. People didn't even understand that you could actually accomplish that. Yeah, great. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, thank you, of course, for saving my life and John's. 
Yeah, boy, Atka. Dr. Ruben Quintero, a hero in the lives of hundreds of thousands of people around the world. Thank you, the viewer, for watching, and I hope you learned at least a little about this condition that has affected millions of people. Also, thank you to my wonderful parents, Amy and Tom Morris, as well as my sister Lacey and my brother John. And, of course, one more special thank you to Dr. Quintero for making this documentary possible, because without him, it's likely I would have never been here to make it in the first place.